Do you know what causes low self-esteem? Moreover, did you know that your happiness in life depends on how high your self-esteem is? This seems true. Self-esteem is the key element to live a happy life. But when you hear the word self-esteem, there are two different responses to this. Some people will say, yes, self-esteem is important. I love what I'm doing. I love who I am. I'm always thinking positive. The other people would say, I don't like myself. I'm always thinking negative. Everybody around me is better than me. I can never be more confident about myself. It seems there are two different ways how people think about themselves. But self-esteem is critical for both. People who have low self-esteem can raise their self-esteem by learning how. It's not a natural born talent. It can be learned. People who have high self-esteem have different problems. They don't understand how it feels to have low self-esteem. They fall into the trap of hurting other people's feelings. You might resonate in whichever way. If we learn more about self-esteem, both types can communicate much better with each other and understand other people's feelings. People who have high self-esteem will be able to understand why people suffer with low self-esteem. People who have low self-esteem can learn how to improve and build confidence. Self-esteem is said to be one of the most important mindsets in our modern society. Let me explain why. First off, what is self-esteem? The definition is this, to be fulfilled of being yourself and accepting your self-worth. It's about how we think about ourselves. Are you fulfilled of who you are? Do you think you're a valuable person? But some of you might say, why do we have to respect ourselves? What's wrong with not being satisfied of who you are? Hating who you are, wouldn't these negative thoughts have a positive impact to push you to improve who you are? Like the underdog mindset, yes, you're right. Thinking negative isn't always a bad thing. It can boost up your fighting spirit. There's also a good side of thinking negative because it can prevent you from doing dangerous stuff. You shouldn't always feel invincible and jumping into the fire. That's dangerous. Thinking you're not good enough and refusing who you are is only effective for people who already have high self-esteem. People who have high self-esteem can take that burden and criticism. They can hate their life and use it as fuel in order to reach out to the next level because they already have a foundation of high self-esteem. When a person who has low self-esteem tries to deal with negative incidents, this isn't the case. It's like walking in a storm of negativity with low self-esteem. You'll get crushed by all the negativity in the world. The first thing that happens when people have low self-esteem is this. People stop taking actions. It's easy to feel like everything is impossible. I'll never make it. I'm a loser. I'm not talented. What makes me say that I can? I'll screw up again. What's worth even trying when I know I'm going to fail? The world is crazy anyway. Why is taking action so important? When you read any kind of self-development book, you always see successful people preaching about the importance of taking actions. Move your body, take massive actions to grab your dreams. But no matter how hard they teach, most of us are not able to move. The reality is 70 to 80% cannot take actions. Most of the successful people who write self-development books and tell successful stories already have a high self-esteem. Those motivational and self-improvement stuff only resonate with the people who already have a certain amount of self-esteem. People who are going to seminars, reading books, watching motivational videos, starting social media, finding a job, starting a side hustle. Self-development and motivational words only inspire those people. Whenever someone who has a low self-esteem listens to that, they would feel uncomfortable and being pushed to the corner. That's why it's natural for them to not take actions. But again, high self-esteem is the soil for people to take actions. The next thing that happens when people have low self-esteem is this. They don't feel good when receiving compliments. I think there are a lot of people who have the same symptom. When someone says, you're beautiful, you look fit, you're doing a great job. They would say, no, no, I look terrible, I'm not in shape, I'm always doing terrible mistakes. Don't you have people around you who are not comfortable being praised? This makes the people who gave the compliment feel bad too. The key is to understand about self-esteem. Whether you're the type that can accept compliments or had the experience of having your compliment undelivered to someone, the root cause of why wasn't clear enough. Now we know the reason. Why people can't take actions. Why people can't accept compliments. It all comes down to lack of self-esteem. But maybe you'll say, mind your own business, who cares if my self-esteem is low? Just leave me alone, I'm not bothering anyone. But hold on a minute, it's not just about you. There is a risk having low self-esteem because it gives negative impact to the people around you as well, especially your kids and your family. Self-defeated mindset passes on to people. If kids think their parents hate who they are, they tend to think the same. Not always, but parents have a huge influence on their kids in many aspects. 
it's crucial to acknowledge that low self-esteem is something that we need to work on. But how do we do that? The point is this. To understand that self-esteem is like a wave. Even if you think that you're someone that has high self-esteem, that's not always the case, right? It goes up and down depending on your situation or physical or mental conditions. I personally think that I have a rather high self-esteem. Try to do my best in my corporate job. But to be quite honest, the workload is quite crazy these days. Side hustling on YouTube. But this confidence easily gets crushed all the time. When I fail keeping the promise to my boss or teammates. When I upload a video and nobody clicks on it. The important thing to understand is that there isn't always rainbow and sunshines. There are those up and downs for everyone. You might one day think you're the king of the world. But another day you will feel like a complete loser. So if you have low self-esteem, I want you to understand this. You're already seeing the light out of the tunnel. Believe me, if you click this video and watch this video thus far, you're already getting up. Don't worry. By understanding what self-esteem is all about, to be fulfilled of being who you are and accepting your self-worth, and understanding the consequences of what will happen if you have low self-esteem, that you will end up not taking actions and accepting compliments, that you have a risk of bringing negative impact to the people around you. Observing yourself from the outside is already a big step forward. Do you remember when you were a kid and you had a first fever? You didn't know what was going on inside your body. But when your parents or doctor told you that a virus came into your body and your body is trying to fight against it, that if you sleep tight and drink some medicine, you'll get better. You felt relief, right? Understanding the problem of what's going on from the outside is already moving forward to solving it. And here's the very important point. The capacity of how much self-esteem people have is different but it can grow no matter what. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. It's not a natural born talent. You can grow your self-esteem. It can be learned and acquired. Moreover, people who have low self-esteem have a chance to become more successful. Why? It's because they're more sensitive on other people's pain. For people who already have high self-esteem, they don't really know why people are suffering because they've never been in their shoes. People who start from low self-esteem know their pain and struggles. They can understand the difficulties on what people are going through in life. Being sensitive of other people's emotions is definitely a strength. If a person who had low self-esteem learned to raise their self-esteem, just imagine how powerful that might be. How much great advice they can deliver to the people who really need it. Great counselors and coaches are the people who know how it feels to be low. And they've overcame it. The more desperate, the more pain and struggles a person goes through, they become a better, stronger person. Their words become powerful and an inspiration to others. So what can we do to grow self-esteem? It's to understand the reason why we start feeling negative of ourselves. There are two types. One, the past. Haven't you ever thought like this? Due to the miserable past, I'm who I am. It's because of that terrible thing that happened to me. We get into loops thinking about our horrible past again and again. That's the first trap. The second trap is comparing with someone else. He's better than me. I'm not talented or wealthy than him. It's not easy to not compare yourself to someone else. But being trapped in the past memory and comparing with someone else is the two biggest traps we fall into when we start feeling negative about ourselves. This can't be solved overnight, so don't worry. Moreover, you can't really do anything about it. We're all programmed to compare with someone else. This may sound weird because I'm trying to explain the importance of self-esteem. But let's get real. If I told you to forget about your past, could you? It's not that easy, right? And when you look around, there's always people better than you. So what should you do? You just have to let it go. Just put your past and comparing yourself aside for a moment. It's difficult to do that, I know. But just by acknowledging the fact that you are wrapped your head around the past and comparing with others is already a big step forward. We all have fuzzy things in our head, but once we put words and clarity to them, we can identify the problem. Identifying the problem is close to solving it. Maybe you started something new but didn't last for a week. Maybe you did a mistake and you lost your confidence. All those negative thoughts that you have, just put them aside. What we want to avoid is this. We don't want to make decisions based on your past or compare with someone else. Don't think you have to make your decisions based on that. You can make your own decisions by yourself. Hear me out. You have the power to choose. And the power to choose is the secret to happiness. You don't have any obligations to anyone. You have the freedom to make your decision independent of your past or somebody else. When you're locked up in fear and obligations to someone else, life sucks. 
Nobody should tell you what you should do. Nobody including your past memories should tell you not to do this or that. In order to keep the freedom to choose, you need to put your past memory and compare it to others aside. Then what should we do? Yeah, keeping them aside sounds nice, but you're not solving the problem, right? But before providing the solution, let's be real. No one can raise their self-esteem overnight. If that would have been possible, no one would have suffered. Baby steps are more than enough. Don't think of trying to be super confident in a week or so. Just use these four tips and increase your self-esteem slowly. The first one is this, the power of words. This is the most important thing in effective medicine. For example, the way you look at yourself in the mirror every morning is crucial. What kind of words do you say to yourself? To be honest, I used to always say to myself, I look tired, I look too old. No, no, start saying different things to yourself. Don't say I'm ugly or I look like a mess. Say positive things, I'm wonderful, I'm amazing. Start loving the person in the mirror instead of hating him. But I know you're thinking that's the most hilarious thing that I ever heard. But stay with me. Have you ever heard that if you start your day smiling, literally by making your face smile, you start feeling happy? Even if you're sleepy or feeling terrible, if you change your physical state, your emotions start to follow. You don't believe me yet, right? You might say, I've never accomplished anything. I don't believe in that crap of if you smile, you'll feel happy. You don't need any proof to feel amazing or being confident. Let me tell you a powerful quote from Ralph Emerson who was an American philosopher. The most powerful confidence is false confidence. Does confidence need reasons to be backed up with? Whatever you bring on the table, it's just based on past results. And you can get easily discouraged if you compare with someone else. If you have a gold medal, someone might have 10. If you have a million subscribers, someone might have 10 million. The past results of what you've achieved or didn't achieve compared to whom doesn't really matter. I'm going to be a millionaire. Great. Someone might laugh at you, but it doesn't matter. Past results doesn't matter. The most powerful confidence is false confidence. Try it next morning. Get up and say to yourself, I'm amazing. Next, let's talk about the power of rephrasing words. What do I mean by this? Whenever you say a negative word, immediately change it to a positive one. Literally, eliminate any negative words in your dictionary. Words are powerful and what you say is what you become. Let me give you some examples. Whenever you say, I won't forgive him, say, I forgive him. You might think I can never be such a generous person. Why in the world should I forgive him? Look at what he's done to me. I will never forgive him. Forgiving one another it sounds simple, but it has a huge benefit for you to move forward and not become a victim of the past. Yes, the person did something bad to you, but forgiving doesn't mean that you're weak or anything. It means you're strong enough and have the courage to move forward. Whenever you say that's impossible, convert it to it's possible. Whenever you say I'm exhausted, change it to I worked hard and did a great job. Whenever you say it's not my day, say it's my day, lucky me. Whenever you say oh no, say oh yes. Whenever you say I can't handle it, say it's a piece of cake. Whenever you say I give up, say the game is not over until I give up. Words are really powerful. Words create thoughts. Thoughts create emotions. Convert negative words to positive ones and you stop feeling the energy. The second tip of increasing self-esteem is this. Write down your emotions. Whenever you get pissed off about something, whenever you have worries about something, write all your emotions on a piece of paper or type it on your PC. Don't think about being polite. Nobody will see what you wrote. You don't have to read whatever you wrote ever again. Why did I make that mistake? Why did my boss yell at me? He shouldn't have done that. Shame on him. Anything is okay. Whenever you talk with someone about your problems, you always feel better after the conversation, right? This has the same effect. After you put your emotions into words, you start feeling better. Just by putting all your sorrows and anger on a piece of paper, you can literally throw out all your negative emotions. All your negative emotions can be scrapped after you put them into words. Just try it and you'll feel so good. Tip number three, call your hero out. Do you have people that you respect in life? Whenever you're in a desperate situation, think about how would my heroes deal with it? It doesn't have to be someone alive. It can be a legendary hero. What kind of actions would they take if they were in your shoes? Of course, they might have a stronger mentality or skill than you. You might not be able to take the actions like they do, but that doesn't matter. Just by thinking like this, you get to observe yourself from a higher angle. Whatever you're going through, there's always a way out. You might not have the same talent like the hero, but you'll notice that it's not the end of the world. That there are different ways to deal with your current situation. 
And by trying to look from the hero's perspective, you inject power to rise to the challenge. The fourth tip is three good things. Think of three good things what you've done today. Write them down every single day. That might be one, I woke up early this morning. Two, I was able to go out for a walk. Three, I watched an inspiring video on YouTube. Anything is okay. It doesn't always have to be something great. We all have our ups and downs like a wave. Try to find something good in everyday life. And try to find joy in life tomorrow and make it a better day. Once you start building this as a habit, the way you approach everyday life will dramatically change. It will bring more colors, more meaning and fulfillment and joy and happiness. Three things that you enjoyed and were happy about. Try it and you'll be amazed on how much positive energy it will bring into your life. All in all, if you work on converting your negative words into positive ones, if you write down all your negative emotions on a piece of paper, if you think of what your heroes would do in your adversity, if you think of three good things that you've done today, your life will slowly change. You'll stop raising your self-esteem. The important message is this, please don't give up. You can grow your self-esteem as long as you don't give up. Your self-esteem will grow if you find a new way talking to yourself and understanding of how to deal with your negative emotions. Self-esteem can be learned. It's not something we're born with. We can grow our self-esteem with the right habits and mindsets. If you like this video, I think you will like the one over here. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Joey and this channel is all about self-development tips to change your mindset and changing your life. So if this sounds good to you, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.